Good morning, folks. Apart from the drawback of having to sign up at the White House website, this is as good as it gets. Any petition with 100,000 signatures must be addressed by the President of the United States. I have to believe the only reason this still has 80,000 to go is because people just don't know about it. Organic, please? Thank you. I'll sign that petition today. Kind of a downer to go along with this story is the new strain of drought-resistant rice. I thought Japan was against this stuff. I've also linked a terrific article on the Titus Bode relation of where you can find planets in a solar system. That's a long-time fascination of mine. Kicking straight to space weather with a geomagnetic disturbance sparked by impact from a coronal hole stream 36 hours ago. Since then, the speed has kept rising over 600 kilometers per second. Density holding steady, the disturbance continues. Pulling up the satellite environment plot, it's got the KP at the bottom, the smooth curves of geomagnetism and energetic particles showing major flux as they break their nice curves. Proton flux up top is quiet. This chart replaces the HARP data on the space weather page of the website. Don't forget the CME expected to impact us any moment now. We may have taken it already and that's what caused the second storm spike, but I'm not seeing any density signatures, so we may still be waiting. Did you know that last solar minimum, the long low one, we took the fourth largest flare we've ever seen. Now solar maximum can barely pop a C flare. There is only one sunspot with multiple significant umbras, and they need to do some mixing and growing before being able to flare. The umbra opening between blue fields is facing Earth today. You can see the equatorial portion contains a coronal hole. Quake watch score of 6 last night. The added geomagnetic shock, but the new moon is a day away, and although less significant than geocentric alignments, we heliocentrically have Mercury, Sun, Venus, Mercury, Sun, Saturn, Sun, Venus, Saturn alignments all in the next three days. We'll hold a watch score at 6 for now. Took another 5.8 near yesterday's 5.8 slightly south of it. Also had an above average tremor on the Canadian coastline. Tremors in the Gulf of Aden and Uganda. And a Chilean uptick follows the Easter Island rumbles of the past week with a volcano eruption in Russia. Top weather story. It's a twofer, Gill and Henriette on a path aimed at Hawaii, yet every expert's track seems to have it missing either just south or to the north. When I see these tracks, I think you need to pay attention. Here's the TRMM of Gill leading the way. If it seems like this news went backwards today, it kinda did. Everything about this community went backwards in the last three days, and there is no time for divisive discourse when scientists are giving us a reminder of why we are all here. You don't have to buy into their global warming talk or what they say is causing it, but the manner in which they model these things allows them to have a much better idea about what's coming than what's caused it. The cascade cannot be far away. It is practically on our doorstep. And given the events of the last three days on YouTube, a major refocus is in order. No images here, just listen. There are a lot of changes on this planet. In addition to climate change discourse, there's a lot of evidence that humans are attempting to modify the weather. And we're talking about much more than just the disclosed cloud seeding. But just how much of this climate change is our fault? The magnetic pole shift began in the late 1800s, and the fading of Earth's magnetic shield has genesis in the 1600s. Neither of those points are disputed. This is Earth's protective interface with the energy from space and its weakening. It's not just more solar energy coming in, but that's more galactic cosmic rays affecting our planet and I've never seen either of those factored by climate scientists. Our situation put a bit into perspective by what is happening around our solar system. For the details on the following, please see the energy from space videos and the next ice age. But the sun is literally shutting down magnetically. The irradiance has not changed much, but the sunspots and magnetic fields are disappearing just like it did at the Maunder Minimum. How similar is it? Well, that minimum is named for the Maunder team of scientists who witnessed, quote, the Earth killing sunspots. Today, we can see 360 degrees of the sun and can tell that this quiet sun-facing Earth has just faced Earth and done so for two years. We discuss it every day here at this channel. The backside of the sun and the limbs have produced numerous large flares and CMEs, including the only X flares of 2013, facing 90 degrees away from Earth. This is supposed to be solar maximum, yet every day we watch nothing doing on the Earth-facing disk. In a solar system full of cycles, this breach is significant, especially because the result of less solar magnetic fields means more coronal holes more alpha waves, and more direct energy transfer to the planets. 
our planet has avoided other massive changes like the one we see on the Sun. For example, Venus rotation has slowed by minutes and has seen tremendous surges in the wind speeds. Either of those changes on Earth would dwarf our current plight. Jupiter's prominent weather features are usually quite steady amidst an otherwise turbulent atmosphere. But recently, the entire planetary stripe disappeared, and Big Red's little partner, Red Jr., was born. Saturn has a regular superstorm every 30 years that lasts a few weeks, but its latest came a decade early and lasted 200 days. Its rotation slowed down was brushed off as scientist error. I doubt it. Imagine a hurricane the size of Australia that lasts for a month haven't had to report one of those on Earth. These planets are harsh by comparison to Earth, but these shifts from their normal activity are far beyond anything we're seeing on this planet. Now how is the solar system changing so much and we're all still here? I'm not sure what percentage is man-made, but I do know that the magnetosphere is not being factored the way it should. There is no way pollution is shutting down the solar magnetics and changing the other planets like this. Unfortunately, that's only half the story. It is my opinion that there is a plan to blame human pollution for a cascade to come in our climate circumstance, and that it will be the impetus to usher in Agenda 21. It only works if they make the public beg for it under the guise of their own safety and protection from themselves. It is my opinion that weather modification is the reason Earth has changed only a little, but that it's not your friend. They may be controlling this descent to be timed at their leisure, I'm concerned that they will irreparably harm the climate by messing with it. And if they're spraying aluminum oxides out of planes, there is truly poison in the sky. My thoughts on geoengineering were laid out months ago at the end of Energy from Space. It's my opinion we can do better in terms of exposing weather modification. So far, the efforts have focused on general awareness, and they've been very good so far. But now there are enough of us to dig deeper and discover who's funding, what's the oversight, who are the contractors involved. Now that's a job for this big community. I do indeed believe the Landshite minimum on our doorstep could bring a mini ice age. Recently it appears the experts began saying the same thing. This is all review for those who have spent time at this channel. For those who need to see where this info comes from, I present and cite all the facts in these referenced videos. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.